um, in, in countries very close to India who have major issues, right, because of the scaring, the worry, the worry that some of this isn't over yet um, and the economies are very fragile anyway. So what, what do they do? And the, the conversation is stood around. What do you do as a leader? A couple of things. You, you be transparent and you get on a town hall and you tell people these are the problems. They're not stupid. They realise there's problems. But what they want, they know there's not answers, but what they want is trust. Um, and they either trust their employer or they trust the government. They might trust both. Uh, I suspect in a lot of third world countries they don't trust the government, not because they're distrustful, but because they know they can't help them. The governments aren't affluent enough to support them like some countries. I live in Singapore. The, the Singapore government's giving people who aren't employed money. Australian government's done that. But some of the countries, third world, they don't have the money to, to help people out financially. So they then turn to the government, and uh, sorry, to the employer, particularly if they're big employers. And what we're going through a strategy today is rolling out the town hall. They've got several thousand staff. He's got to come up to town hall. Then, then what do I say is the next question. Well, you've got to be transparent. You've got to admit there's problems. And the key is that's being transparent and authentic. You're not trying to tell lies. You're not trying to brush things over with a nice white paint to make everything glossy. But at the end of the day, the critical part is here, yes, you're transparent, but you've got to leave people with some hope. In other words, be, be very exact on what you can control. You can't control the economy. You can't, in this particular ones in oil and gas, so they're even worse. But their price, same as aviation, you can't control what's happening there. But what, but you can be very certain of what you can control. And that's what you've got to leave and just your town hall on is something that gives people, they get off the town hall, they're all phoning in or on the laptop, Zooming and WebExing, um, but they can get off and say, well, at least he's got that or she's got that. And I have faith that whatever they do, they'll sincerely try their best. And that's all people really want. I mean, they want more, but at the end of the day, that's all you can give. So, sorry, a long-winded answer. But that's being authentic, true to yourself, not trying to tell anything else, not trying to put words, knowing what they want to hear by, by saying it, being honest, being transparent. But one thing you can do is what you can control and finish on that. So they've got some hope that there is some, you've got someone batting for you, basically, um, who you trust. Thank you, Ross, for that. Really appreciate your stepping in uh, on the fly completely. Uh, you know, there is a question here, in fact, which follows through as to we often experience leaders who are authentic as a person, but sometimes they're not able to be so in their business role when it comes to announcing tough decisions to some way also take care of people who may be fear. Now, I would really say transparency again, when you're being transparent, that does not mean Honest with your inner self does not mean I honestly say everything. There is a distinct difference between the two because when I am being honest, I, I have to look at is that opinion serving the cause, the people at that point in time. So to some extent, you're being like, right. you know, the strategist like Krishna in uh, Mahabharata, the strategist where you speak to the extent it serves the people and not just say it because then you're being emotional. You're just emotionally downloading. Oh, yeah. And that's a very fine line. Yeah, yeah to how transparent or honest to be. That's right. I mean, you've got to ask the question, does this, me telling him this, does that add value to those people? Yeah. So are you adding value? And if you don't want to hear, yeah, that's spot on. Yeah. So then we have another comment, Sachi, and I will take yours. As a leader, how should a leader balance vulnerability to being decisive? And the two are not, vulnerability is not waffling. Vulnerability is simply taking an opinion. Also, when you are authentic with yourself, you know at what point you're waffling and at what point you're not being decisive. 
and you know when fear has stepped in to your head to taking a decision. So a situation requires a decision. You have to take a decision, right or wrong. Like today, you know, people may be uh, not very comfortable with some of the decisions that are being taken, but there is no perfection in any decision. It is what feels right at that point in time. And that's why I said agility and resilience become very, very critical to le authentic leadership because you have to have the authenticity to say, I tried this, it didn't work. Let me step back, revise the decision, go back to the drawing board, adapt and move forward again. So it does not necessarily mean weak. In fact, vulnerability is not a weakness in this way. It is a strength to know when to step out, to take in, uh, the opinion of experts, when to step back, take the decision and live with it. Because sometimes the decision may be contrarian. But it's really standing by that decision then. So where are we? Where are we on our questions? Yes. So, uh, you know, so far we have these two questions and thank you so much for that. So if we move forward on this, as you just, you know, suggested that an authentic leader has to somewhere take a decision whether it is right or wrong. But then in this case, how can a balance be created between authenticity and sharing the responsibility and accountability? So sharing shared leadership. Okay. Now, when you have shared leadership, everybody is taking leadership for their role, their perspective, their space. That is one part of it. So that does not mean that, so everybody is accountable for delivering what they need to del deliver. So if I had, I had to look at like right now, I think we have a classic case of leadership where the police is responsible for manning the discipline on the streets. The BMC is responsible for making sure that, you know, the city is clean and it's provided for in many, many ways. Like they're keeping these extra beds, healthcare is coming up. Now that's where shared leadership and accountability comes into place. Now, if I had to really step up to it and say, okay, then who becomes after that accountable to making sure all of this happens, it becomes the chief minister. So really it starts splitting downwards, but that does not mean the others are not responsible for what they have to deliver. Yeah. So, Thank but you. in that context, uh, Ashu, I mean, uh, there is this entire blame game, which is also happening saying, you know, these were our, um, you know, uh, scheduled work to be done and we've done that. But of course, in these kind of situations, <laughs> uh, everybody has to surpass themselves and sort of, you know, reach out to others. Uh, so when, how do we end up doing that? Because people end up being in their own silos and people don't end up uh, sort of working for a larger, um, sort of a larger goal because they're not aware of it or they don't want to do it. So in that scenario, how, how does it happen? I mean, how, how do you do it? Is so communication the key? Communication and, you know, calling out is a difficult one thing to do. But uh, I would say that's where it's, leadership is also about calling out you the leadership is not about blaming it's about owning to your own actions owning to your own slip ups owning to everything and that's why i said it's honesty with self it's not just honesty in the space of speaking whatever i want to because that's not authentic leadership that is power play that is control that's a completely different uh, now for a leader to be that authentic or that resilient or that, you know, have that level of ownership, you need to be anchored in yourself. The anchoredness is very, very much required. Now, invariably, um, are all leaders anchored? Not necessarily, I'll put it that way. Uh, what and what are they anchored in is best known to them. And I don't want to really walk into that space right now, it'll be digressing. Uh, but if you're anchored in your authentic or your inner self, you will not blame. You will 
take responsibility and you will own up to what was to be delivered or done by you and you will operate from that space. Okay, so in, in a self, you're saying that we, we should be looking at our own self and not get perturbed by what is happening around because in the end, only you, your own self are, is, is in your control, right? See, your own self is in your control, but depending on your position and where you are in any team or any uh, organization, uh, whether you are at the helm of it or you are part of an, part of the team, a you can your only response you can control your reactions. Your accountability comes to delivering what needs to be delivered, and again the ownership. Collective. It's a collective responsibility. So there is communication. Yes, Rashmi plays a very critical role in making that possible. So if something is not understood, if something is not clear, if something is not possible. Now in deliverables, yes, there are many, many times that unrealistic, unreasonable targets, deadlines are put forward. And uh, can every, you know, it's speaking up to say, I can't do it or I need help. So that itself, that kind of communication is where you can say, is it vulnerability? It, yes, it is. But it is also, can I say, it is openness? Is it owning up to what I can, cannot do? Why not? Because it's towards a common cause. Sure. Uh, I think Aditi has a question. I think, yes. if you can unmute Aditi. Yeah, I have, answer, yeah. Answer. I've unmuted her. I think she needs... Aditi? Uh, yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for um, taking my question. So basically, if you could maybe pinpoint about uh, two or three essential skills that are required for a leader in a situation such as this, what do you think someone should uh, prioritize? That's what my question is. See, right now, the priority has, yes, indeed been towards trying to control the COVID. Uh, in that collective, it is collective responsibility. And I would, because it, and I would say that's not just for the leaders, even we are collectively responsible for controlling sure. this. Uh, I think that that itself is leadership where we recognize as a society that the leader alone. So when we talk about accountability, ownership, responsibility, each person in the society today is equally responsible for whether it's the social distancing or whatever the various protocols that are expected of us. Uh, it starts from us. And it comes down to really, so one is really taking responsibility for our choices and the consequences and recognizing that every choice we make has a counter uh, effect on another person. And that holds true in any organizational situation as well. Uh, the second thing is when we are doing anything, is it serving somebody? Is it essential? So I would extend the word essential to really any action, any thought, any, anything that we are doing, not just essential goods. Why am I doing what I'm doing? How reflective, how much am I thinking of what I'm up to? What, because productivity, again, is very, very critical right now. Uh, we have to be as productive as we can to balance this whole lives and livelihood because there is no other way. So keep ourselves as motivated as we can to really uh, and focus on our emotional well-being. Uh, and that would be true for any leader as well to be productive and sustainably productive because this is a long haul. It's not a short one because it's not just the lockdown, it's the aftermath of it as well that we have to deal with. So Asha, you talked about sustainable uh, leadership. So uh, but for being a sustainable leadership, you continuously have to be creative and innovative. So how does one become that? So sustainable leadership to be, firstly, any innovation starts from within. Only if any person keeps changing their Look at a canvas. So if I had to look at a canvas, only if my canvas has space, can I paint something on it? If it's a cluttered canvas, a no new thought, no new painting, nothing can come. So how often am I really giving, creating space as a leader in my canvas 
for new thoughts to emerge. So constant decluttering, constantly being in touch with what is new happening outside. And I'm not saying an information clutter, it's knowing when to cut off because it can even be an information overload. Sifting through becomes very critical. And that's why making time for self and listening to self, actually our uh, inner self is the biggest guide to being to innovating time and again, time and again, because as a person transforms and grows as a human being, they are able to keep letting go of what they did before. So it's like an organization. I start as a trainee, I become an executive, I become a manager, a leader. Now, obviously, if you keep sitting at the space of a trainee, you are not making space for a trainee. It's the same way you're innovating yourself in a role. Similarly, it's innovating your thinking and you can only do that when you observe patterns within yourself and you keep shedding patterns that don't serve you to make space for newer thinking to emerge. So it requires a lot of self-awareness and alertness to shed old patterns of thinking and to allow new ones to emerge. Yeah, so we have Purvi here asking a question. I'll just unmute Purvi. Uh, before we come to that, I have a request. Uh, Rajan uh, Sinha, yes, uh, you wanted to add something. Can we unmute Rajan? Yeah. Yes, Hi, Rajan. I have unmuted. Okay. Okay. Okay, can I, can I start? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay, these are very great situations for learning what the leadership is all about. One of the things is, criticism is a, is a price of being a leader. So the higher the leader, the more the criticism. So as such, criticism doesn't mean anything whether you are a successful leader or not. Sometimes you are able to be judged as a leader whether you are successful long after you, the, the situation has ended. Sometimes even after so many years, it is difficult for the people to decide whether you are a successful leader or not. So it's a long haul. I'd say, um, especially the bigger the crisis, the more the span when, when people can say, because present situation is no matter what you do, there are costs. As um, Ashu, you, you yourself have said, if you extend the lockdown, there are costs. If you don't extend the lockdown, then there are costs. So either way, there are adverse situations. So you have to take a decision taking all inputs don't worry about what people, I mean, people may be criticizing, it's okay. But are you authentically, uh, so much authenticity means that you are true to yourself. Authentic leadership means that you accept, yes, I may not be perfect, but it also, it also means a concurrent responsibility to, to show people that even though I may make mistakes together, we will be able to ride it through. We may make some mistakes, we may correct them, but together in the long run, we will ride it through. So, very well said, Rajan. That is really, it's that holding that torch right now to say together we will ride it through, even yeah. though nobody has the answers and it's being candid about that. Yeah. That's the important thing. That uh, it doesn't mean uh, uh, vulnerability, showing vulnerability does not mean showing your panic. Because a leader cannot afford to show his panic. That uh, weakness is showing panic. As long as you appear confident that all put, put people put together, learning from each other, we will be able to ride it through. Uh, there is no weakness. At the same time, there is authenticity. Brilliant. Thank you so much for adding that. And can we move to Purvi's question now? Can thank I move? Thank you. Thank you, thank you Rajan. Yeah. We'll just... Uh, yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, Ashi, Ashu, uh, uh, what I was trying to ask was that uh, whether it's in current situation or in an ongoing or organizational situations, a lot of times when it's a shared leadership, uh, people are thinking of their own department or their own silos, like somebody said. How do you make them see the big picture? You do have visioning exercise. 
Sorry, you dropped off Purvi part way. A certain common projects you give them, uh, like uh, we have. Sorry. Uh, okay, I heard part of it, and I'll try to respond. Yeah, that you just. Purvi, if you can just uh, you know write down because your connection is way uh, poor. I guess we could just hear part of your question. So you can. I have typed the question. Okay, how do you make each one see the big picture and not just think about their own vertical center or division when, okay, so you do have envisioning exercise. And okay, what I have seen is you have to keep re-emphasizing the context. It is, that sure, is yeah. also part of a leader's role is the context has to stay alive. And how often do you really, so when you're talking about whether it's the ex project or you're talking about, you know, the results in the project or you're acknowledging them. So another thing that I think leaders sometimes tend to overlook is the acknowledging acknowledgement part. And there was recently, uh, you know, there were comments about how is Modi even playing the HR role by uh, cause, uh, creating the celebrations, the acknowledgements. He's being the perfect HR leader as well. And acknowledgement is a very critical part of keeping people aligned together with the vision. True. No, and I just basically, even in the current situation, like you said, that, uh, you know, if each, uh, for example, people are saying between lives and livelihood, they're saying, oh, you know, my business is getting affected. This lockdown is, is uh, getting on to be too much and we should be getting back. Is this the right decision? So, you know, again, seeing the big picture is, I think, critical. Yes. And, and none of us are alone in this decision, you see. I mean, in this whole context right now, uh, it is a global pandemic. So it is not, uh, it's an unusual, unexpected, unpredictable scenario which is across board true and I think what one even coming back to the part of innovation each one of us is not just resilient but extremely resourceful uh, there have been tragedies or you know adversities in the past in the world I understand not at this scale or level or across like this but there have been adversities whether it's the wars or thing and mankind has risen it's always risen and I I think we have to really keep that in mind at this point that together we can rise again it is the path may be pain, will be painful but we can true I mean that's how innovations are born I guess correct it's it's the you know they say invention is uh, what do you call it is uh, Nest, it's yeah. like a necessity, right? You know, it, it's the mother of uh, necessity. So it's really one of those things where innovation will happen. Look at even e-commerce, the way I, okay. So something very, it sounds extremely simplistic, but I didn't even know there were so many people or who had sources for suppliers of mangoes and chikus and avocados and cheese and bread and uh, groceries and the works. Uh, people have stepped out of their comfort zones to make things available. True. And that is itself leadership. So the way I see this scenario is the number of people who are, who've stepped out of their comfort zone to show their leadership is unbelievable. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashu. Yeah, Ashu, should we move forward? We have one more question from Tulsi. Yeah, sure. How will leadership be like at the new? Yeah, norm? Tulsi, you can. You are unmuted now. Sure. Thank you, Barabi. Hi, Ashu. Nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, so uh, we're talking about leadership, uh, you know, for ages, and we've been practicing some of the theories and leadership uh, concepts, principles. And, uh, you know, from time to time, we've been uh, re-resonating uh, that. 
uh, right now in the current situation, we are talking of leadership uh, in the context of dealing with the crisis. And uh, also, you know, we're getting ready from a recovery uh, stage perspective. Mm -hmm. but we are all set towards a new normal because this pandemic is going to change the way we live. It's not just going to bring in certain changes uh, which are going to be fleeting in nature, but it's going to change the way of working. It's going to change the way we live, the way we do things. So from a industry perspective, how would the new leadership uh, be in the new normal? What so, changes do we see? So firstly, I love this you know phrase that has got coined new normal. The minute you put the word new in front of normal, that means it's something different from before. So... <laughs> So I think that itself is a paradox in itself. But coming back to your question on what would leadership look like, I think if there's one thing, uh, COVID has made abundantly thrown in everybody's face is we are all human beings. I think that has glared so strongly in everybody's faces. It's unbelievable. Uh, the second thing that's glared very strongly is that we are interconnected and none of us are alone. So, and that's why I come back to the point of shared leadership or authentic and authentic leadership. Authentic leadership really stems from the place of I am and I am a human being and so are you. So we we serve each other to the best of our capability, and that's when the concept of shared leadership emerges, because we had somewhere fallen into a place where I think leadership was taken as they are solely wholly responsible for everything. No leader can do it all. Even take a country forward. It has to be something which everybody uh, does together. So ideally, I think if, you know, when, okay, even for an economy that is currently, when we look at just India, and I'm not looking globally, but if you look at whether it's, Middle East is, oil is a huge issue right now. I mean, that economy runs on that and oil demand is down completely. US is really not in a great place with the way the pandemic has exploded there in many in New York and many parts of US. So when you look at globally, even in India, economies are getting battered. To come out of this situation, you have to work together. It's collective. One person cannot make this uh, turn it around. And I think that's what uh, this whole uh, pandemic has, is creating. It's shifting the, what I would say, where leadership was a lot about power and control to leadership being shared, leadership being collective, leadership being accountability, ownership, all of that. Sure, thank you. Yeah, Ashwini. So if we can move forward from here, we don't have any other next question, but uh, you know, there, a lot has been talked about, you know, how communication will change, how innovation will have to be, you know, be there to become and get the authentic leaders on stage, how decisions will have to change. Uh, can we also talk about, you know, prioritization in this case, like, you know, shared leadership uh, also requires leaders to prioritize and how that can, you know, now change with the leaders uh, trying to manage a lot of things together. So I think the first priority everybody has is survival and then sustainability comes after that. I think survival itself has become extremely because cash flows, whether you look at cash flows, whether you look at retaining employees, uh, work from home, I think was one of the most brilliant things to have done immediately because that itself kept the world going. So that is what, whether you call it innovative thinking, call it agility, but digital transformation had to happen overnight. And from that will, you know, there are organizations I was reading up, for instance, TCS may consider uh, extending work from home to many, many more employees, even going forward to cut back infrastructure costs. So 
to survive retain talent and you you have to look at all your business elements to say where can i cut spend salary have been cut in a graded manner again rather than i know there will be job losses because or you know there are many organizations that may not survive this um uh, and there are some who may go through expansion that is what i think it will be a shift in scenario is obviously a very very big big shift that's going to occur and it's not going we are not going to see everything uh right away it's going to pan out over time it'll take a couple of years for things to settle down and show up as to what survives what becomes more of and less than and so on it's going to take time right uh, any any other questions from the audience we still have uh, you know 10 more minutes so we can you know incorporate some more questions can i uh, invite people to hear share how they have innovated themselves through this phase uh to stay strong to stay relevant more than anything stay relevant uh in this phase and i would really appreciate that because that yeah, would really sorry. put uh, an element of positivity to this whole conversation because when we are talking of self innovation let's say what have we you know what has anybody done differently to stay relevant yeah sure why not can anyone share their experiences here sure i am happy to share thanks nidhi uh, yes sonal uh yeah this is purvi uh, if I, uh, somebody else wants to go ahead first otherwise i can happily share put on ready okay now adhe illa ellarkum ready purvi go ahead yeah. okay so uh, so i uh, i run a not for profit called catalyst india and we work with girls uh, pursuing professional education like engineering and we do a lot of skill enhancement training mentor support exposure visits so everything is face to face and uh, as soon as we went into lockdown we, we didn't want to stop our support to the girls in fact girls had to go back to their villages and rural areas and uh, their classes were also you know shelved and uh, we immediately moved to the virtual platform and thanks to our trainers as well as our stakeholders like mentors completely went and it's been an amazing experience in fact i feel we are working more than full time now and um, all our stakeholders have been supporting the girls are able to do their mentor meetings we are running our training sessions on weekdays weekends we are able to invite guest speakers like you ashu uh, to address our girls and uh, i think in fact our attendance has improved uh, only issue is of course the uh, we, uh, the network connectivity for uh, some of these girls uh, back home and also we hear stories about some of them struggling for their day to day living and we are trying to figure out how we can further help them but um, we were trying we were planning to uh, you know pilot uh, some of the trainings uh, virtual uh, some of the virtual trainings in the near future and this was like a forced trial which has worked uh, well and i think we can go ahead with the blended learning model uh, in the future and that would help us scale up as well thank you purvi for sharing thank you so much and all the best and congratulations on uh, your achievement uh, you. you are not the first one to say that people you know i have had many clients and people tell me they've been more productive and more working harder than they were before yeah true so i yeah thank you thank you thank you purvi ashu so if we can you know uh, in uh, last five, few minutes if we can just sum uh, you know kind of sum up and if you can share some tips as to how leaders can emerge out of this crisis and especially some tips to the uh, way and move forward ahead in these times so couple of things that i would start with is self discipline and self care uh because it is a difficult phase it is a phase that's going to last longer a uh, long and i'm going to put out a you know something here which is not necessarily spoken 
uh, is that uncertainty and anxiety are both, both state of mind. They're not really the reality. And if we really focus on that and, man, and work at controlling our emotional reaction to a scenario, we can truly emerge you know, as innovative leaders. Uh, we get so caught up in the conversation, in what is happening externally, that we actually lose sight of the fact that we are extremely resourceful and we, are, uh, we have the capacity and capability to rise to many challenges. And this is yet another challenge. So it's an opportunity to actually uh, display an opportunity to uh, really see how can I reset, recreate, uh, whether it's an organization or uh, personally, because many people are sitting back and saying, how can I really look at my relationships with uh, self, with employees, with family, explore a new passion, have the discipline, plan out your day, more, be more structured about it, and uh, really focus on what's, es what's essential and what's not. So, and I'm sure this is one scenario which has probably told all of us, life is indeed short, live it, totally live it. We are, uh, fear is not the answer to it. It's really living life to the fullest that each one needs to commit to it, I think too. I think that's what I would really like everybody to, you know, close on the note of how can each one of us commit to really living life to the fullest. Thank you so much, Ashu, for that uh, wonderful tips, you know, that you've given and in the, in the close, closing note of it, that we all have to be, you know, um, very, very grateful for being here right now and how we can change. So just to sum up the whole session, uh, we had a wonderful, you know, conversation with Ashu on authentic and shared leadership. And Ashu here uh, told us various behaviors for authenticity and the sharing of responsibilities. The first and foremost always comes that, you know, we are accountable, we build trust among our, you know, people, and we take the onus of our response, uh, our, uh, you know, uh, the work that we have done and the onus of the decisions that we have taken whether they are right or wrong and go back to our employees and work hand in hand for that. That's when, you know, the real authentic and shared leadership platforms can be created. And of course, being more resilient, being more positive during these times is going to definitely take us forward. Thank you so much, Ashu, for, you know, joining us and giving your time for this wonderful session. Thank you so much for having me here, Bhairavi. Appreciate it. And thank you to everybody for uh, joining us today and for all your questions and participation. It truly added uh, to the conversation in a very big way. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So we would just like to you know, end here that you know, uh, we have been uh, doing this inspiring Thursday webinars and every Thursday we get you know, speakers around various fields. So next Thursday, please don't forget to tune in. We have to... Uh, panel discussion wherein two you know, leaders from the corporates are coming and telling us how to manage post-lockdown. So we would definitely uh, look forward to you all coming and joining there as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, look forward. And thank you uh, for hosting these sessions. Look forward to the next one. Yes, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Wishing everybody a great Thursday evening. Bye for now. Thank you, Ashu. Bye-bye.